Hey guys, it is Your Kingdom Come, and we are back here with another podcast. Um, and we are starting a new series. Yes, we are. We've only had one other series before. <laughs> but, <laughs> Pretty lame. Yeah, but we're starting a new one. So this is our <laughs> second series. Uh, we had talked the other day on, on one of our other podcasts about going into uh, the book of First John. Yeah. Um, because, you know, there are a lot of people that, uh, th- you know, they might be saved, but, they're, you know, they're struggling with uh, assurance of whether or not they're yeah. saved. Or, I also, also, I think... Uh, you know, there's people who are saved and they don't believe they're saved. Yes. And they need assurance. Like, yes. Like, you need assurance. And then there's other people who aren't saved and they have assurance that they are saved. Yeah. And so we're trying to, in this episode, we're just trying to counteract that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and First John, you know, you may have heard this before, uh, but First John, that's really the place to go. People say, you know, if you're struggling mm. with assurance of salvation, go to the book of First John. And I think this is also important. Um, after reading first John, um, first John can show you whether, if, if you're not saved too, Oh yeah. you know, so I yeah. think it, you know, it bears, it, it bears repeating that, um, the book of first John is not simply meant to help Christians feel better. Although it is meant for that. Oh, it yeah, is meant it is. to give them it assurance, is, yeah. you know, but at the same time, there are tests in the book of first John. And we had, uh, we had talked about this before yeah. we came on here that there are really, um, you could you could subdivide all of John's uh, tests that he lays out in the book of First John to test whether or not you were yeah. saved into three uh, major categories. Do you want to just hit on that? Yeah, th- I think there's three. When me and Troy were going through this, um, I, I believe there's three. Well, we believe that there's three major categories um, when we look at First John. Obviously, you can nitpick and pull out subcategories, but the, I think the three major overall categories in First John of tests are obedience walking in the light Mm -hmm. you know what does it mean to walk in the light we're gonna hit on that that's our episode today and then uh uh, the next test would be loving our brothers in christ yeah yep and the next one the last one would be uh doctrine yes what do you believe about jesus who do you think jesus is Mm -hmm. who is he to you right is he lord right in the flesh is he got you got to have the right doctrine or else you're not saved yeah you got to believe the right things you know i think it was uh and and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean let me just qualify what I just said because you know I don't want people to misconstrue something I said that just because and I'm I'm not saying that you have to agree we have to all agree on every type of doctrine right yeah. I could I could uh, you know if I if I counted the amount of people that uh, that all disagree with each other on the way that Revelation yeah, is yeah. and the way that things are going to be in Revelation uh, I'd be standing here all day. <laughs> you know, I'd be, yeah. I'd be here all day counting all the different views of Revelation. So yeah. we don't have to agree on everything, but there are some certain key yeah, core things exactly. that we have to agree on. Yep. Who is Christ? You know, uh, Christ died for our sins, was buried and was raised from the dead. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Trinity, things like that. Yeah. So all doctrine right. is important. Yeah. And it, yeah. And like I heard uh, Justin Peter say, he said, um, you know, it's not enough to believe in Jesus you have to believe the right things about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. Know? Yep. It's not enough to just believe in some Jesus you figure out in your mind. Mm-hmm. You have to believe the Jesus of the scriptures. Yes. You have to believe the true things about Jesus, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so today, yeah. today we're going to talk about uh, one of yeah. the tests that John lays out, and that's the test of obedience. Yeah, and I think uh, in the first chapter of, of First John, he already lays it out in the first chapter within the first mm-hmm. Uh, In the sixth verse, he says, um, if we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Yeah. Um, So what is John saying? He's saying if we say we have fellowship with him, meaning you say I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus as the son of God, this and that. You you say you have fellowship with God when you say that. Right. And then you you say that. But you walk in perpetual darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it mean to walk in darkness? Well, walking in dark, because John, there's always a contrast with John in his gospel and his his epistles. It's always light and darkness, light and darkness, light and darkness. What does it what does that mean? Well, darkness, um, meaning walking in darkness, it just simply means to be living for sin. Yeah. Walking in sin. That's Mm -hmm. all. That's what consumes your whole being yep. is sin. Yep. You you think you, the most thing that is uh, 
proning your mind mm-hmm. is sin. Yes. You know, and that's yep. all you care about. Right. You can care less about the things of Christ. You mm-hmm. rather live for sin. Yep. So, and it's not a perfect, um, let me get this straight. Like I said before, it's not a perfect uh, obedience. Mm-hmm. It's not a perfect walking in the light. Right. But what can be generally said about you? Yeah. Can I generally say about your life and look at your life and say, yeah, he's striving for God. Mm-hmm. He's striving to live like Christ. Yep. Yeah. I can say that. Or can I say, yeah, he's not striving at all for yeah. Christ. He's living for mm-hmm. the world. Or what is a person's desires? Like if I, if I asked you, for example, right, if I told you someday in the kingdom of God, in eternity, yeah, there is going to be no sin, and there's not even going to be the thought of sin. Man, if that gets you excited, if that gets a person excited, I think they're on the right track. <laughs> That's good, you know? man. Because That's good. Be, be, or, and and yeah. even like you could say, if people are striving for righteousness, right? In 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 God's in the kingdom of God, right? When we get there, right? Yeah. He's gonna completely sanctify us, right? Amen. So there is going to be no more sin and if that gets a person excited i think they're you know i think they're going in the right direction and one other thing that i think definitely bears uh you know is is worth mentioning obedience as we've said many times before obedience doesn't save you you know it's simply um obedience is just what what naturally happens to a person that has been made alive by god amen you know you know because because we all, you know, we are aware that, uh, you know, a, a person is saved when God reaches down and opens up their heart and their mind to the yeah. truth of the gospel. That yeah. Christ died for, for our sins, was buried and was yeah. raised again on the third day, you know. And, um, and, and, and all that, you know, all that that yeah. entails for us, you and, know. And, and when, when a person uh, realizes that, mm. uh, truly realizes that, they can do nothing else yeah. but... You know, but but desire at, at least desire to yeah. walk in obedience, to walk in light. And, and you know? I want to say one thing there, like I said in the Born Again episode when we had Steve mm-hmm. on here, there is no such thing as someone being born again by God who doesn't produce fruit. Amen. And Jesus, like yep. Steve said on that podcast, mm-hmm. Jesus did say, "Whoever doesn't pr- produce fruit, cut the branch off. Yeah, yeah. Cut them down, tear them down, and cast it into the yeah. fire." What did he say? He said that those people, uh, Steve said that those people were, you know, we used to consider them radicals, right? But then you realize that Christ says they're the only one. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah it's true. I mean, people get like, and that's the thing, you know, man, it just really disturbs me when people say, wow, these people are really radical yeah. for Christ. And yeah. Christians say that. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not talking about non-believers, people who aren't Christians. That's Christians who say, Wow, those people are really radical, I think man. Even, They're really going all out. Yeah. At one point in my life, I think I've even fallen into that trap, you know? Yeah. 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 You know? And, and it's, and it's, it's, you know, you can't think like that right. because guess it's what? Yep. That's what Christ desires, that you go all out <laughs> yeah. for him. Yeah. You know? Yep. So. Yeah. He didn't say, uh, take up your cross for no reason. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, but. So, you know, as we move along here in First John, we're going to be giving you a lot of different texts. We'll have them come up on the screen, you know, as is usual. But you're just going to see as we go along here in First John, hopefully, that he's just building a case. Mm. You know, he is, he is like, he's just fortifying what he said. He's like, you know, for example, if we say we have fellowship him, but we walk in the darkness, we lie and don't practice the truth. You know, and then he's like, Oh, well, you didn't think I meant that? Well, here's another verse to show you <laughs> yeah. that I mean that. You yeah. know, so also, gonna... another thing about that verse before we move on yeah. is he says, you're a liar. Yeah. You're a liar. Yep. I mean, I, I, I heard this from one preacher. You can lie to your parents. You can lie to your pastor. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to yourself. Yep. But you can't fool God. Mm-hmm. Amen. You can't yep. fool yep. God. Yep. There's no way. You're a liar and you can't fool God mm-hmm. with your own... Uh, living for yourself and thinking you're a Christian. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. And we're going to see, you know, we're going to see this uh, more and more as we, uh, as we continue on, right. Yeah. Uh, the book of first John chapter two, um, you know, verses five and six it says by this, we may know that we are in him, right. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way as which he walked, mm. you know, and that's, that's that just gets back to what we were saying before about walking in the light walking in the darkness, right? Is anybody going to be uh, perfect and do everything the way that Jesus did? Everybody say along with us, no. 
<laughs> you know, <No>. so <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, Get with the program. You gotta say it. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, do it know. one more time. No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we can move on. <laughs> yeah. So, so nobody is going to be perfect like Jesus, right? That is not what we're saying. And this text kind of proves that, right? It's not yeah. asking you to be perfect like Jesus, but it's asking you to strive to be mm. perfect yeah. like Jesus, yeah. right? That should really be our goal to desire righteousness. Yeah. yeah. So. It's, you know, when we, and then what does it mean to walk as he walked? Mm. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, look at the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. Jesus bore every single fruit of the Spirit perfectly. And he put God inside of us so that we would bear those fruits. Amen. The Holy yeah. Spirit is God Man, inside just, of us. I was listening to Raven Hill today, and he was like, Christianity is the only religion where a man's God lives inside of him. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> you good. Know? Yeah, that's good. It's true. Yep. You know, if if Holy Spirit is really living inside of you, you're going to bear the fruits, mm-hmm. you know, and walk like Christ walked. And, you know, if you look at, Christ's life, you see self-sacrifice, self-giving, uh, love, um, mercy, uh, justice, you know, mm-hmm. all, all these things incorporated in the person of Christ, you know, and study it, mm-hmm. you know, study the person of Christ and get to know this. And if you want to, if you want to know how to walk in the light, look at the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Look That's at the ten, yep. look at the Ten Commandments and just try and strive after it. And obviously not, obviously if you mess up, don't like beat yourself over the head yeah because you're not gonna but your your desire should be like okay i'm saved I, i'm justified by grace through faith in christ alone mm-hmm. now i just want to obey yeah i just want to do yep. whatever the master says because guess what he set me free and i just want to live all out for him now how do we do that look at his word yep. look what he says look at what he what what the lines are what the boundaries are mm-hmm. you know and how to please god you yeah. know, and that's the other thing. Walking in the light is also pleasing God. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you you know, we keep getting back to the fruit of the spirit. You, you notice that? Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder why. You know, <laughs> it's we, true. We, we are. We're talking a lot about like assurance of salvation over these past couple podcasts. You know, we've kind yeah. of been hinting at it. Now we just got to I'm just going to go at it, you know. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. as far as, uh, you know, the fruits of the spirit are concerned. I mean, honestly, as, as believers, I feel like, and you know, maybe I'll go home today and I'll do this. You know, we should, mm. we should pin the, you know, attack the fruits of the spirit to our wall, write yeah, them out, attack amen. them to our wall and wake and it, up in the morning and say, that's what I'm going to strive to be today. Yeah. Amen. You know? Yeah. And if you don't know the fruit of the spirit, it's in Galatians uh, five. Yeah. I'll sure. put it up on the screen yeah. right right now. You'll see it up on the yeah, screen. Yeah. We're going right to put it up for you just so you can know, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. So just cultivate that, you yeah. know, for your own life as a Christian, cultivate that and strive towards that. Mm-hmm. And and please God with it. And so also um, another thing John mentions is uh, in second John, I mean, uh, first John, <laughs> first John, two, <laughs> first John two, <laughs> verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Mm. Okay. So John says, do not love the world or the things in the world. That really gets back to your desires. Yeah. 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 Because w- what are your affections? Mm-hmm. What What do you desire most? And we're going to hit on a podcast about um, can Christians, you know, strive for money and fame, yeah, the American yeah. dream and yeah. stuff like that. We're going to yeah. hit on that hard. That's going to be fun. I'm yeah. excited. For yeah. That. yeah. But but do not love the world. OK. And one of the reasons why we shouldn't love the world is because it's passing. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's passing. Yeah. It's it's fading away. Yeah. And the only thing that will ever last is the kingdom of God mm-hmm. in eternity. That's yes. in, that's the only thing that's going to last. Everything, do you realize that everything in this world is going to pass away? Mm-hmm. And so John says, do not love the world, okay, or the things in the world. Now, what are the things in the world? Well, you know, money, the immorality, yep. the sin. Obviously, when he says world, he's not referring to the earth. Like, don't love the grass and the trees and <laughs> stuff like that. He's not referring to that. Yeah. But there is a sense in a materialistic sense, don't love possessions. Yeah. You know? And with the world, he's mentioning don't love. And, oh, I'm just seeing this now. In verse 16, for all that is in the world, right here, mm-hmm. yep. the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Okay, yeah. so what is in the world? The desires of the flesh, sin. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yep. And then in the desires of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, yeah, yep. in the pride of life, I want to 
be on top. I want to be on the mountain yeah. and I want everyone to look at me. <laughs> Who cares about your name? <laughs> Who yeah. cares? Who are you pleasing yourself or Christ? Right. Right. You know, that is, that is really, that's what it's about at the end of the day. Right. At the end of the day, we are here to please Christ. Yeah. And that means, you know, extending his kingdom, right. Yeah. You know, advancing his kingdom. And, and you know, if people don't like that, you no, know, if people, if we're sticking to the truth of scripture, yeah. And people don't like that, then you know, like you like you've said, uh, they have to go talk to God about that. Yes, you know. Yes, so. and also in verse seventeen, I don't know why I did not. I only looked at this verse, but it just keeps <laughs> going on. I don't know why. I did we'll be this. here all day. We'll read the rest yeah. of it right here for you. <laughs> You're yeah. gonna have to stay here and watch. <laughs> <laughs> so verse seventeen says, "The world is passing away, along with its desires, and whoever does the will of God abides forever." Yeah. And John goes on to say, you know, or or Jesus says, what is the will of God that you believe mm. on the son? Mm. That right? we know that we know that we God. know God. Yeah. 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 And that we walk in him. And one of the and if you're doing the will of God, you're going to do what he commands you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and the first thing is believe in the son, trust in the son yes. for salvation. Amen. And then the next thing is what else is the will of God? Well, pleasing him, mm -hmm. walking in the light, obeying him. Mm -hmm. And those those things, like we said before, those are those are byproducts. Those are things that come out yes, of the amen. heart of someone yes. who has been born again. And we, you know, we talked about uh, being born again, born of God, right? Yeah. On, um, you know, in, in the past, on those couple of episodes, the last, the only other series we did, <laughs> the the two part series on on being the first born one again. we did, the first one we did, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we talked about being born again, and uh, 1 John 3, right? Mm. Now we're kind of moving along here. We're in chapter 3 now. 1 John 3, uh, verse 9, talks about uh, the, the fruit of someone who has been born again. How, again, how can, how can we know that we have been born again? How can we have assurance? Well, here's yeah. how we know. Verse 9 says this, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. Because he has been born of God. Now, again, uh, this text, right? Mm. This can make some people, you know, it can make some people mad. Yeah. But you know what? This is this is the word of God, and yeah. the, what the word of God says is that mm -hmm. if a person continues sinning, right? Like we said, like we said before, and we have to make sure we qualify this. Yes. If a person makes the practice of their life to sin, if they desire just to sin and to sin and to sin and to sin and they to sin, wake and up, and they, no wanna, they wake up, they plan sin. They mm -hmm. go to bed, they plan sin. That's all they do. Yeah, but then they say, oh, well, you know, Jesus is my Savior, and I, you know, I, I, I went forward and accepted him, but then there's no change of life. Yeah. I mean, man. When a person is saved, they experience a radical transformation yes. at the hand of God. They have encountered yeah. God. As as John would say, his commandments aren't burdensome. Yeah. You know, yeah. before we before we come to Christ, the law is a burden. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a burden dr leading us to Christ. Mm -hmm. As the Galatians would say, yes. the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So the law before we were saved was just condemning us. You're lost. You're mm -hmm. condemned. You're condemned. You're condemned. It's hitting us over the head. Yeah. And then we come to Christ. Christ fulfilled the law for us. Now the law isn't burning some. I just want to fulfill it and, and obey it because guess what? I'm saved. Right. I'm going nowhere. Yeah. You know? And, and one thing that I think definitely uh, bears mentioning is John, right, throughout, I guess, church history lore or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. um, was referred to as the disciple of love. Mm. And some people look at texts like this and they say, well, that's not loving. No, it actually is. Yeah. Why? Because it is, it's loving to tell someone about what's going to happen to them if they don't believe in Christ. Yeah. You know, and it, that's like, that's like if, if you, if you're hanging out, right, if you're playing on a set of train tracks, right? Or let's say, no, I got a better one. I got a better one. Oh boy. Let's say you build your house on a volcano right yeah. at the top of a volcano. Yeah. Right. That would be interesting. <laughs> but that say you possible. build your house right at the top of a volcano, yeah. right? And I am a volcano expert. I don't know what they actually call them. But Volcanoist it's not, it's, I'm or sure something it's not like that. a volcano yeah. expert. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say I am an expert in that, right? And I have noticed that that volcano is starting to shake a little bit. Like it's going like to erupt, right? Mm, yeah. And if I don't do everything I can... To get up to the top of that volcano and tell you, 
dude, you built a house on top of a volcano and it's going to erupt and you're going to die. Yeah. That's not loving. Yeah. That's hateful. Yeah. That it, is hateful. If I if yeah. I tell if I don't let them know mm. about what is going to happen to them and I just coexist with them, that's hateful. Yes. You know, and, and, and the same thing applies to, you know, the same thing applies to hell, you know? Yeah. If that's hateful, if we don't tell people yes. what's going to happen to and, them. And the other thing, too, when people get mad, oh, you're, you know, you're just like, why do you preach so hard or mm-hmm. something like that? You know, if I went up to that dude's house on the vac- volcano, right, and I just, doom, 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 hey, you know your vault, your your house. You're gonna die. You yeah. know if you want. No, you if you w- want to come down, then you can. But you don't have to. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. You would literally sprint to that volcano and knock the door down. Say, come, come yeah. for safety, <laughs> refuge. You know, I'm dragging you out if I have <laughs> yeah. to. No. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, and and the other thing for uh motivation. So you know we talk about live for Christ, live for Christ, live for Christ. But why? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, why? like it's why? almost like we're looking at like the the the, the flip side, like the positive yeah. side of like why what what good things do we have to look forward to, right? Mm. As yeah. we live for Christ. Yeah, and and John two twenty eight uh, says, and now little children abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Plain and simple, mm-hmm. right? Live for Christ, abide in him, that we may have confidence and not shrink from him and shame at his coming yeah. now let me ask you a question what do you want to hear at the judgment seat of christ oh amen yeah what do you want to hear do you want to hear well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of your master it's been prepared for you before mm-hmm. the foundation of the world mm-hmm. or do you want to hear you could have done better yeah you could have oh. lived for me more imagine hearing that from the mouth of god yeah that would be hard. Yeah. If but you, imagine hearing well done from the mouth of God. That'd be awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you know, it's, we have to just realize we, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm-hmm. And I mention this like almost every podcast, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a sobering reality. But man, like, do you realize like this life we live now will count for all of eternity? Mm-hmm. The 80 years we get, the 30 years we get yeah, in this yeah. life will count for all eternity. Everything you do for your, for this in this life will measure up at the last day. Mm-hmm. And like First Corinthians says, you know, some people build up hay, stubble, wood. Some people build up gems, diamonds. I know it's talking about pastors and stuff like that, but you can refer that to the believers too. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you building mm-hmm. upon the foundation of Christ? Are yep. you building a life of sin and for yourself and for your name? Are you building gems and diamonds all for Christ, all for his glory yeah, yeah. that you will get more rewards? And, you know, it's just, and it's not about the rewards. It's just, man, I want to be embraced by Christ and want to hear well yeah. done. Yeah, man, that would, that would be awesome. And I think, you know, well, I, I think we're you know we're trying to run the run the whole spectrum here of of um of reasons why I guess a believer should live in obedience and why a believer must live in obedience, right? Yeah. You know, it's not because it's not because you know we're staring down our noses at people and being like, did you did you mess up today? You know, no, that's yeah. not what it is. What it is, I messed is, up this morning, dude. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> but but you know, you know, you know, it's like what what we're doing is instead, you know, we're taking the warnings that John has, you know, that, that God, you know, that God put in His Word. Yeah. Right. This is how you can know that you are saved. This is how you can know that you should really check to see if you're saved. Yeah. You know, and then also, you know, on the other side of that, we want people to know. That man, if if we live a life of obedience and submission to Christ, if we follow Him, if we follow Him and do His will, mm. we are going to hear "Well done." We're gonna yeah. say, you know what? He's He's gonna say, "I made your life matter." That's what He's gonna say. Yeah. You know, because so, there are so many people out there, and they're looking for purpose. They're looking for the you know, looking for a way to be, you know, to have purpose in this world, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But Christ is really the only one who can make our life matter. Amen. We, we have, you know, we know why we're here. Mm-hmm. We both know why we're here, why we're doing this, mm-hmm. why, 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 we're, why we're here every single day in this world. Why are we here? Mm-hmm. It's to live for Christ yeah. and to bring him glory and to bring as many people as we can to Christ. And so, uh, 
also another aspect of walking in the light is uh, confessing sin. Yes. You know, because it's a reality. We sin as believers, you know, Mm -hmm. and and it's, you know, we're not saying that it's impossible to commit adultery or something like Mm -hmm. that, you know, and commit some heinous sin. Yeah, you that's know, in First John. That's in First John as well. You know, we confess our sins. He's faithful to forgive us. Yeah. you know, and that's part of walking. The, part of walking in the light is that we confess our sins mm-hmm. to God. Mm-hmm. You know, and not just um, like not just a hey, Lord. I'm sorry. In Jesus' name, Amen. No, it's not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No. no, it's it's a reality of sorrowful Lord. Oh Lord, create in me a pure heart. Lord, help me to never do this again. You're agreeing with God about your sin. Yes, and that's the Greek for it too. Yeah. Yep. The the word and yeah. So and I just um, for you want to hit that first Corinthians. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So one thing we also wanted to stress, you know, as we talked about, you know, we talked about the warnings that are given in, you know, in the Word of God. Yeah. For for people who are um, people who are believers, right? Yeah. Or people who are not believers, people who want to know whether or not they're saved, evaluate your life, right? And this is what the book of First Corinthians chapter six says. Uh, it says this, starting in verse nine. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. That is, again, you know, that is God's word. And let that serve not as a hateful rebuke, but as a loving warning. That is a loving warning to us to, you know, don't don't affirm these things. Right. Don't don't practice these things. Right. Yeah. And if you are practicing these things, loving reminder, it might be a good idea to evaluate your life, to evaluate whether yeah. or not you truly are trusting in Christ for your salvation. Yes. And and I love uh, Paul's words. He says, do not be deceived. Yes. Don't deceive yourself on this. This is re- real. This is eternity. Mm-hmm. Don't deceive yourself on this. This is serious. Mm-hmm. You know, in all these categories we see sexually immoral, drunkard, idolater. Mm-hmm. If this is what categor- categorizes your life mm-hmm. right now, speaking, I can say you're sexually immoral, you're a drunkard, you're a homosexual. If I can say that generally about you, mm-hmm. do not be deceived. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. Right. And for believers, if, if you've come to Christ and you're still struggling with this and you're still living for yourself and living in, this, in, the, in these sins, I just want to give you some like encouragement. Later on in that verse, in verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Such were some of you. Such were some of you. You used to live this way before you came to Christ. Mm-hmm. You used to do these things. Why would you go back? Yeah. Why? Right. If, if anything, if you're doing these things, drunkenness, sexually immorality and stuff like this if you're doing this as a believer you know what it it says a lot about you you know what it says christ is not lord in your life Mm -hmm. something Mm -hmm. else is lord in your life Mm -hmm. and it's sin and you know what the best way um if you are a believer right if you're already a believer the best way to have a a greater more elevated view of god Mm. is to go back to the gospel yeah Go back to what he did for you. Go back to who God is. Amen. Go back to who you used to be. Yes. Right? Yeah. And go back to what Christ came down and did for us. And that's really the bedrock of what we're talking about here. Right? Salvation begins when God reaches down and awakens someone's heart to the truth of the gospel. Amen. When they they believe that Christ died for their sins, that he was buried, he was raised again. Right? Right? And that, man, he's giving them, he's he's giving each and every one of us who belong to him yes. an inheritance that's far greater than anything we could ever imagine. Amen, brother. And, you know, I just want to end off the podcast with this. John Piper said, one of the signs that you have the spirit in you is not that you have bad desires, but that you are at war with them. Mm-hmm. Are you at war with your desires? Yeah. That's the best way to look at it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, that ends the next podcast. We will catch you guys next time. God bless.